Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hi to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the Eden Street Soap family and to all of my current subscribers. Hi everyone, I appreciate you and thank you for staying with us. So what we're doing right now is we are adding the mixture of weighed out oils into the bin. I have olive, coconut, palm, along with castor and canola oil. I also have a teeny tiny bit of shea, a teeny tiny bit of all, sweet almond oil and a teeny tiny bit of palm kernel flakes. While we are getting everything into our clear square bucket here, I also have my distilled water and my lye <laughs> over there doing their thing. Um, so my lye water is working itself out, it's cooling down. I am going to add sodium lactate to that in a little bit as soon as it's cooled. And uh, I'm just mixing up everything really quickly and then I am going to add in a little bit of cowling clay along with some titanium dioxide. I've also pulled maybe like two teaspoons of coconut oil out of the original batch and I used it to mix with my micas. That way they're nice, they're nice and smooth when I add my soap batter to it. And I'm adding my cowling clay and as you can see it is kind of a thick a thick viscous fluid here um, what we did is I added two and a half teaspoons of cowling clay one teaspoon went right into the oils at the beginning of the recipe the second one teaspoon or one and a half teaspoons was put to the side in that container in that little mini beaker and I added the scented oil to it because I found that when you add a scent to cowling clay, it sucks the scent in just like a sponge would and it holds on to it. And all during the cure time when your soap is losing water and everything's evaporating out of it, that clay binds to the scent and it makes it like it just holds on to it so a month two months three months goes by and it loses weight and lo and gets firm because it's losing water but it's not losing the scent it holds on to it so i stand by that now every single recipe that i put clay in i add the scented oil to the clay that's just how i do it now i don't know and the reason i split it is because if you add too much scented oil to clay, then you're not gonna be able to mix it up. Uh, you're gonna, it's gonna get really thick and like a paste. I like it to be more liquidy. That's why I split it half and half. That's the only reason why. I guess you could put it in as a paste, but I don't know. I, I've found that I have more success doing it the way I just explained. So in our batch today, we are doing a flower garden soap, aka the rose garden soap. And this soap is not necessarily a beginner's recipe. I would say this one, mm, it's not a novice. It, it's a little more advanced because we're working with soap dough and this recipe, I actually had to make preparations ahead of time. So I knew I wanted to do something with 
rose scented oil. I knew I wanted to do another flower soap, but I knew I wanted something a little more showy and a little bit bigger than just piped on rosebuds. So I was thinking of doing the, um, the Russian tips, but you don't get, you don't get the exact look. Um, your soap batter has to be perfect to make those Russian tips work right. And mine's inconsistent sometimes because the scented oils I use, sometimes they accelerate and sometimes they don't. So I was like, eh, I can do something better. So I decided that we were going to work with the soap dough. So the last soap I made was orange patchouli, which is a really popular scent combination. Um, I like the orange because I can add a little bit of essential oil in there, and patchouli is just a very popular scent. It's been around forever, was made very famous in the 60s and 70s, and continues to be popular to this day. So back to the story. <laughs> um, so I decided to test it out, see if orange patchouli would work with this flower garden soap. I smelled it, and out of the bottle, um, Nature's Garden Candles is where I bought the scent from. Their patchouli doesn't smell very strong, but once I made the soap, you could smell it. But that was he, neither here or now. I added everything together. I smelled it, made sure it would work. And once I decided it worked, I made my orange patchouli soap and I made a little extra and whatever extra soap I had. After about 24 hours, I took that extra soap, went through everything all the steps to make it into a soap dough and then after about a week I pre-made my roses and not just rose buds full-blown roses out of this soap dough so I am super excited to show you what it looks like oh thumbs up leave a comment let me know if you've ever used soap dough or let me know if you want to know how to make soap dough out of your current soap recipe. I mean, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I mean, I can teach you that. That's no problem. Yeah, drop a comment. Let me know. I'm happy to do a recipe on it. I know it takes me forever to get recipes done, but I blame my video editing software because it doesn't work anymore, and I had to go to PowerDirector because... Kinemaster or Kindmaster doesn't want to upload videos right now. So that's why things are taking me so long to get uploaded. But back to this. Sorry. So in the video, I've already laid down my green layer. That's supposed to represent like, you know, leaves or grass. And then I followed up by adding that light pink color, which was Brambleberry's Rose Gold. Then I added just little bits of some of the remaining white. And I'm just going to add a little bit because I'm going to mix it together to get a little bit of a swirl. And there's no real technique here. I'm just adding the soap together, kind of folding it in just to get a messy swirl here. Adding a little more white. And bear with me, it is so hard to work at an angle. While I'm doing this soap, I have it faced away from me so that the camera can see what I'm doing. And it is tricky because either everything wants to fall to the one side, which I guess is fine for certain soaps, or 
I just can't see what I'm doing and I get the soap all over the sides. But the things I do for you guys, I'm trying, I'm trying here. All right, so we got a lot of white in here. We're gonna mix it with that light pink, make sure everything's off the sides. And then I'm gonna add in some of my darkened hot pink color. And just give it a little bit of accent. Oh, I forgot. First, I'm going in and doing a quick hanger swirl. Just mixing it up. It's more of a mix-up than a hanger swirl. I mean, I'm just kind of mixing everything together. So, we gave it a quick little swirl. Going to smooth everything out. I added in my hot pink. Now I'm covering the top with a little more white. Yeah, I remember this moment. This is where it started to fill up. <laughs> and I started thinking to myself, oh no. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm running out of room and I have all this soap batter here. So I smoothed it out and I'm going to give it a good tap. But for right now, we're just kind of trying to smooth everything. Um, and I go in with a very light swirl technique just to kind of mix everything together, give it a little texture, and then decide that we're going to go in with the green on top. So, hey, wanted to show my logo, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start adding the green in, and I'm going to do that by just glopping it on top, um, just spooning it right on there, and then we're going to mix it all in with that white on top, and then I'm going to add my piped on flowers right on top. So after this gets all mixed in, I'm going to make a just a basic bakery piping bag full of the cake bat the, oh my goodness I said cake batter it is not cake batter do not eat it so <laughs> I'm just gonna make a piping batter full of okay I officially can't talk sorry <laughs> I am going to make a piping bag full of soap dough oh my goodness I just ruined my whole video <laughs> And I can't edit this. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we're going to try it again. I am struggling. So we're going to make a piping bag. We are going to fill it full of soap batter. And then we're going to pipe flowers onto this bar of soap. Hey, I did it. There we go. <laughs> Anyway, so I got a nice little simple design here. And as you can see, I put the rest of the white in. I'm just, uh, I think I added an open star tip here, which is usually what they use um, to do like cupcakes, to do a cupcake icing, but this is a smaller version, so it makes little rosette swirls. And uh, I'm just going in and adding these little circles, um, little dollops all the way across the top. Oh, 
All right. And once the top is covered with these, um, we are going to go in and pipe in little rosebuds. And the reason you want to add some type of rosette or dollop or something is it's going to give you dimension when you're adding in your flowers. So if you just add rosebuds on top of a flat surface, I mean, it's going to look nice, but you won't have the same dimension that you would if there was something raising up some flowers and not others. It's why when you go and buy cake from a bakery, sometimes they'll have like a border going around and then there'll be flowers on top and in between. Um, it, it's just like a standard cake decorating practice but it also works for soap so as you can see I'm adding in my little flowers here it's a modified rosebud um just kind of giving it more of a realistic look and uh I'm putting my bakery skills to work here <laughs> Um, so I'm just kind of going through, adding my roses on here, and um, this is how you make a sideways rose. So with a standard rose bun, it's just a couple little swirls, and it looks like a bun. If you want to make it look more like a traditional full rose, but it's not standing up, you can kind of crisscross on the side and make it look like it has a bunch of petals. And it's just a trick to fool the eye and the mind. And then you see like a rose there. So I'm going to continue on um, filling up all the empty space with flowers. I think my bag squeezed out. That's why I have a flower in a weird spot there. Um, cause sometimes that happens. Sometimes you have extra soap pop out. All right. So we have everything covered. I'm just going to go back and fill in any empty spots that I think, uh, might look good with a flower. I obviously have extra soap batter left and that's why I'm going to go back and fill things in. All right, and here they are. My pride and joy. These are the orange patchouli roses. Um, I went ahead and I pre-made these using soap dough. There wasn't any special way to do it. I just um, made the inner bud and then I made individual petals. And I added those individual petals to the inner bud. And uh, that's how I made a soap dough rose. And some of them are teeny tiny little buds too. Like I didn't add any petals to them just because I thought they might look good as a filler. But yeah, so this is why this recipe for this soap is is a little more advanced because you have to do multiple parts. You have to have made another batch, made soap dough from that batch, and then make these roses and then come back and make the soap and then pipe on all the, these flowers and then add those roses to it. It's not impossible for a novice. I mean, especially if you were good at baking and making stuff. Yeah, I think you'd be great at it. But it, there's a lot of steps to it. So I would say intermediate for sure. And then once I get all the roses that I made covering this soap, which is so tall, by the way, I am going to take whatever green I had left. I'm going to fill up a brand new piping bag and I'm going to go in and make a whole bunch of leaves and add a little more color to this soap. We're going to make these buds and these roses look a little more realistic with the leaves that we're going to add. 
So it looks like I'm just kind of filling in any spots that um, could have used an extra rosebud. And I guess I had a little bit left. So I'm going to go in and like any empty uh, plain places, like you'll see me filling in some spots right on camera. And I'm just kind of just adding a little bit here and there just to make sure nothing's flat. Use up the rest of my bag. All right, and very quickly, you're going to see these green leaves cover the soap, and it will totally transform this soap. And it's so funny, too, because usually I make way too much of one color and not enough of another color, so I actually worked it out perfectly this time. Normally, I'll wind up with, like, very little pink and, like, a ton of green. <laughs> so nothing ever works out, but I guess I did it right this time. So, oh, it looks gorgeous. It's coming together so quickly and so beautifully. I love, 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 love this soap. I think it's fantastic. Oh, there's all the leaves. All right, and as you can see, that is the finished product. Um, that is before I put it away, and obviously once it's out of my wooden mold, that's it the next day. I think I let it sit 24 hours. I couldn't wait. It was hard, <laughs> and I was ready to go. I wanted to cut it. The only mistake I made is either I should have turned it on the side like I wanted to in the video. You can see me turning it on its side, but it was uneven, so I got nervous. Or cutting it, cutting a third off and then cutting that later because my cutter wasn't big enough and it got stuck because I have this um, multi-cutter. But other than that, it was perfect. Everything was beautiful and the slices are amazing. And I stamped the soap and I filled it in with white mica and it looks fantastic. And you're going to see it in a minute. But I don't know. I know I say it every time I make a soap. This is my new favorite soap. So I can't wait for you to see it. Oh, you can check us out on TikTok. Um, over on TikTok, I do a little bit of behind the scenes, a little bit of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, check us out over there. It's eden.street.soap. And uh, I'd love to have you follow me over there. Check us out on Twitter. Basically the same name everywhere. And here it is. Oh my goodness, it's so great. And this is 24 hours later. So... It hasn't even had time for the colors to change. You know how like swirls will come out over a couple weeks and colors will lighten or darken or change. So this is right out of the mold. <laughs> so it looks so beautiful. I am so happy with it and I'm just so excited. I think it came out so good. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Look at those beautiful roses. And it smells just as good as it looks. So, once again, thanks so much for joining me and listening to me talk without being able to edit. <laughs> uh, eventually, my editing software will work again and I will be able to not talk for 27 minutes, uh, making you crazy and not being able to edit it. But, yeah, please, if you like it, please hit the like button like button if you want to watch more please follow us and i try to put out content every other week um hopefully i'll be able to put out more once i can edit my videos again 
Um, I do. Re